On December 6, 2017, U.S. President Donald Trump signed a memorandum recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of the Jewish State of Israel. I have determined that it is time to officially recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. This, of course, reaped protests by Muslims and other non-Muslim sympathizers all around the world. The status of Jerusalem as Israel's capital city remains disputed until now. Jerusalem is the traditional state capital of Palestine. It is one of the oldest cities in the world. It is considered holy by Muslims, Christians, and Jews. President Donald Trump's announcement hurts the peace in the city as it only shows that the U.S. is in total cooperation with Israel in its crimes against humanity. Palestine is a sovereign Muslim state in the Middle East. It is the birthplace of Jesus and even the place where many of the biblical events occurred, as most of the prophets were sent to the people of Israel, thus earning it a nickname as the Holy Land. It is the area that is also mentioned as Canaan, where Jacob lived before he and his family moved to Egypt under the leadership of Joseph. This is where the Israelites returned to after the Exodus when Moses led them out of Egypt. It is the original name of the region, not Israel. The area is also known as the Promised Land when Allah made a covenant with Abraham. The traditional capital of Palestine is Jerusalem. In the seventh century, Muslims conquered Palestine and was made a Muslim province under the Caliph and remained under Muslim control throughout history, except for some time when it was briefly occupied by the Crusaders. Palestinians, the citizens of Palestine and lawful owners of the land, being occupied by Jews, are of Arab descent. In contrast to the Israelites who claim another ethnic identity for themselves as Jewish, Jerusalem being suddenly declared as an occupying nation's capital, which was literally stolen from the conquered Palestinians, is not only a local issue for the city, it is a conflict that rattles the very soul and dignity of Palestine and the Palestinians. It is a conflict that rattles the very soul and dignity of the entire human race, as many of us simply choose not to care, as atrocities are perpetrated daily against the Palestinian people. In 1947, the United Nations adopted a partition plan for mandatory Palestine, recommending the creation of independent Arab and Jewish states and an internationalized Jerusalem. After this, the State of Israel was founded on May 14, 1948, while Jerusalem remained a neutral ground because of the holy sites for Muslims, Christians, and Jews, except when the Jews decide to attack the Muslims there. Before 1947, Palestine was a country of religious tolerance under the Muslim rule where Christians and some Jews, which comprises only 3% of the population, coexist. After World War II, the Jews, with the backing of the United Kingdom, occupied Palestine on claims of ancestral domain. Since 1917, after the defeat of the Ottoman Empire and the end of World War I, Palestine is under the control of Britain, which supported the creation of the Jewish state. Britain promised a Jewish homeland as laid out in the Balfour Declaration in 1917, even without consulting the Palestinians. The establishment of a Jewish state developed more support during the supposed Nazi genocide of the Jews during the World War II. The terrorist attacks of Israelis against Britain, especially the attack on King David Hotel in 1946, was surprisingly seen as heroic acts by freedom fighters, which would have been negatively viewed today if it was perpetrated by Arabs or Muslims. 
the occupation escalated quickly after 1946. But the eventual invasion of Palestine has been planned long ago by the Zionists that aims to create a Jewish state. And in 1897, at the First World Zionist Congress held in Switzerland, it has been announced that a Jewish state should be established in Palestine. Israel, as we were originally made to believe, was only to share territory with the Palestinians. But since the establishment of the Jewish state in 1948, the Jewish occupied lands grew wider and wider, which led to forced evictions and human rights abuses of Israel against the Palestinians. Everything was made hard for the Palestinians. The Palestinians are pushed into small evacuation areas and tent cities with almost zero sanitation, healthcare, education, and all the basic services that even the poorest countries could provide for the citizens. They are raided, bombed, and have their houses demolished almost every day. Calling this a refugee crisis is an understatement. Palestinians are now prisoners in their own country for more than 70 years. Many of the Palestinian refugees are in other countries like Lebanon and Jordan. But the situation for some of them is never better. The Jews love to portray themselves in the movies as victims of the Holocaust to hide the fact that they are the perpetrators of the worst human rights violations in modern history. All these happen every day, but the world only seemed to react whenever the Palestinians retaliate with protests and military actions against the invaders. The world is totally quiet for the old, the women, and the children who suffered and died. Thus do I establish the State of Israel. Israel's claim in occupying Palestine is based on two reasons, they say. One of which is that they are the children of God, and that Palestine or the Holy Land is the promised land or the ancestral domain for them, quoting Allah's promise to Abraham as authority. But these claims are very far from the truth. The claim of an ancestral domain is false, because if you make some total, since 1000 BC, upon the conquest of Canaan and the occupation of the Israelites of Palestine until today, the Jews stayed there for less than 1000 years, while the Muslims have been staying there for more than 1400 years. This fact makes the Arab Palestinians more worthy of the lands of Israel. This makes Palestine and Jerusalem more Muslim than Jewish, whichever way we look at it. We also need to mention that many of the Palestinians are in fact from Jewish ancestors who remained in Palestine who converted to Islam. The Jews never spent much time in Palestine or the area known to others as Israel. Babylonian captivity and their diaspora or dispersion 2000 years ago when the Roman Empire invaded Palestine especially meant that there was no significant Jewish settlement in Palestine for almost 2,000 years. As for their being the children of God, we are all children of God. And being children of God does not permit people to oppress other people. And what about the promised land? The promised land is meant for the believers, as we all know. The Jews have already abandoned God so many times. When they worshiped the cow during the time of Moses, when they killed Zechariah and John the Baptist, practiced sorcery, and when they crucified Jesus Christ. This is simply naming a few times they rebelled against God. Donald Trump or anyone could not simply give away land that is not theirs, or decide upon the fate of others to be at the mercy of people who are known for their human rights abuses, such as the illegal Zionist Jewish state in Palestine. The answer to the Israel-Palestine conflict is very simple. Palestine is for the Palestinians. 
As for the Jews, they can always go back to whichever European country they came from when they abandoned the Promised Land. You don't need to be a Muslim to sympathize with the Palestinian cause. You only need to be a human being that feels the pain of your fellow human being. Jerusalem is the capital of Palestine. Palestine is for the Palestinians.